Tony, we're here in New Orleans. You just got out of the hospital, and they put you back out on the streets. Yes, sir. I, 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 I couldn't even shake your hand because, <laughs> you know, you got, you know. Yeah, I'll brace on it. Um, what's life like homeless? Not a lot of fun. Uh, the thing about it is, like I said, uh, a year and a half or so, I wasn't homeless. I was a productive citizen in uh, Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And after the accident, I was not able to work. And I have been working on getting a disability check. Well, after the accident, about two to three months later, I started having seizures, which I would never had in my life. And they diagnosed that it was due to the brain injury from landing on my head after flying 77 feet through the air. Yeah, you were in a bad car accident. Bad car accident. And which put me on Dilantin for the rest of my life to prevent the seizures. I have had my backpack stolen before with my Dilantin, and if I go two or three days without it, I have seizures. So I have to have the medication to keep from having seizures. Well, then about six months ago, I had a place on my forehead that was just a little small sore that wouldn't heal. And it had me concerned, and so I went to the doctor, and they did a biopsy and found out that it was what they thought was basal cell carcinoma, which is skin cancer. Simplest form of cancer there is. Well, after they did the first surgery, they sent the, uh, the pathology report off and when it, or the sample, when it came back, it was more widespread than they thought. So I had to have a second surgery, which occurred on the 30th. Well, it's good that you're getting this stuff covered. At least they're doing the surgeries. Yes, it's doing the surgeries. And of course, uh, the people at LSU were very nice, I have to admit that. And they helped me to get medicated. And I just found out when I went for this problem with my wrist, uh, the uh, radial nerve palsy, that uh, I had been approved for Medicaid. I hadn't been by to check my mail at one of the shelters where I get my mail, but I had been approved for Medicaid, and that helps. So Medicaid's that, covering the cost of the surgery. Yes. But you're still, you know, when when you you're you like you're having this surgery and you have to go back for more surgery, right? You have another one coming up. They just actually, you back out here, exactly. sleep on the streets and, of New Orleans. Yes, and I have to make sure that this wound, number one, stays clean and also open because they knew that when they did the first surgery that if they did not get all of it, they would have to do a second surgery. And as it turned out, when the pathology report came back, that indeed there was more cancer because they take healthy tissue, what they call a margin. And if when they check the samples, there is not a margin of healthy tissue in the sample, that means that there is more cancerous tissue, which it turned out there was, and it turned out it was not basal cell carcinoma, but squamous cell carcinoma, which invades right. the actual tissue right. and muscle. Well, so, homelessness is bad enough that you have to battle homelessness <laughs> and cancer. I mean, yeah. how do you stay healthy living on, on the streets? Uh, do the best you can. Uh, there, there are people out here that try and help, you know. These, these places that feed, they try and do what they can, but unfortunately, most of them, it's uh, mainly carbohydrates. Rice, pasta, you know, spaghetti, and red beans and rice, bread, yeah. donuts, a lot of carbs. Well, uh, you know, and, and yeah, you don't eat healthy, you don't sleep healthy, you get your backpack stolen. I mean, it's not a, a way to stay healthy. Um, oh my gosh, uh, my heart breaks for you. Well, it, it becomes extremely discouraging at times. Uh, if it weren't for the support of your friends out here who are in the same situation that you are, we have learned that it's a good thing to, for us to support each other, other people that are homeless and have gotten here under various types of circumstances, but it all boils down to the same thing. Homeless, without a job, and just can't seem to get ahead. And don't really want 
someone to take care of you, but at times, especially with the, the health problems that I've had now, uh, it becomes, I mean, uh, tantamount that, that you've got to seek help from somebody. You've got to have help. Now, and you don't qualify, you said you don't qualify. But uh, I, the, 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 there's grants that you, you know, you could get housing, but you don't have mental illness. Yes, that is that is one criteria that they use, and so therefore they, I guess they think that maybe you know if you're of sound mind, uh, but not sound body, that you should still be able somehow to support yourself, which I don't understand the reasoning behind that, but I mean they maybe they they have their yeah, well, they have their reasons. Support yourself while you're dying of cancer. <laughs> well, you know, hopefully, gonna I'm, hopefully, you. I'm, you know hopefully I mean? I'm not dying, but you know. Well, you know but, what I mean. Right? Yes, while you, exactly. While, you're while you have the while, challenge of while, I am, while um, I am dealing with it, yes. If you had three wishes, what would they be? To not be homeless, to be employable, and for the same thing to happen to all my friends that are out here in the same situation with me. That would be a godsend. It's not possible, but you said wishes, so yeah. <laughs> wishes are wishes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. You're quite welcome.